I can't believe how light this thing is for the size. Gosh, the RV Nerd, Vicious RV, kicking it down here at Forest River today, getting you a first look at a new floor plan, the 325, I think it is, uh, either Salem Hemisphere or Wildwood Heritage Glen, or uh, Hemi Glen, Harris Fears, or Harry Glens, or whatever you want to call them, two names for the same thing. This is not an earth-shattering original floor plan, but it's uh, it's crazy that this like triple slide, uh, uh, like rank and file couples model is something that has not existed in their lineup before. And if you, the reason I like to always record this model, whatever I get my hands on it, this style of floor plan, is because if you're trying to figure out which fifth wheel you want to go with. Even if this isn't the floor plan you're looking for, because every builder and their brother builds this, it makes it really easy to be able to cross compare and see them side by side because every manufacturer claims that they're the best one and every dealership claims that they have the best RV. Have you ever gone to a dealership and asked them what uh, what they think about an RV that they don't carry and have they ever said, no, they, they make a better fifth wheel than we carry? <laughs> of course not, no one's ever gonna say that. So what is Harry Glenn basically bringing to the table here? Well, they went with an extended version of this floor plan for extended use and an additional comfort. Like there are shorter versions of this, like 35 feet. But what's crazy is this comes in like 37 and a half feet, give or take, but it only weighs about 10, five empty. That's crazy lightweight for as much RV as you're getting here. It has just an expanded huge uh, countertop on this thing. If you're looking for a mega serving buffet, this provides it. You've got a power televator uh, to be there when you need it and gone when you don't. Incredible window coverage on this and they're using a variety of what I call square flow windows um, that have blackout shades built right in so you don't need any balances and lambrequins and all that kind of stuff. Um, but they do have bug screens, you know, to keep all the creepy crawlies out. We've got auto leveling, uh, tank heaters, there's a, a, a minor battery tending factory solar package available, and a bunch of other things. Overall, I'm, I, I like the execution that they did here if you're not looking to necessarily cash in your 401k completely to go RV. And it's kind of crazy how sometimes builders manage to accomplish certain things, I, I, whether they meant to or not, I don't know. Like, this is an 8 foot wide standard size body RV, but with like all the window coverage and everything, um, the, 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 the barreled ceiling, it makes this thing look and feel huge. Plus the window coverage is just awesome over the campsite of the RV. Now that theater seat right there is what's known as a population preventer because it does have a hard fixed armrest between you and your loved one. So this might be when you're more in the Amazon prime and commitment phase of your uh, relationship and less in the Netflix and chill phase of your relationship. You may notice too that carpetless, um, like Marine boat flooring in the, uh, the slide floor there that will be changing. It's there right now. Um, they, they got rid of the carpet a year or two ago, but they are actually going to swap the slide flooring so that it matches the main flooring. And it'll, it'll actually just give the RV, I feel, a cleaner, better look overall. And um, it will, uh, in my experience, make the RV look and feel a little bit bigger too. Now, if you notice where this one really excels, because they didn't go with the squished down 35 foot version of this layout, which is great. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with builders that do that. But by going slightly bigger, where this one really benefits is it drastically expands the kitchen, especially the drawer and the prep space right here. Now, they did go with a flat level solid surface uh, counter here with power televator. And I feel like this is a push-pull benefit drawback. So it makes your RV look big and it gives you potentially big prep space. But if you're going to have anything with any sort of liquid over here, I think a lot of people might say, yeah, but what if you spill something? Isn't it going to dribble right down uh, onto your TV into that televator behind the, the speaker and the electric fireplace? And the answer is yes, potentially. So that is something that you'll want to factor into your equation. And if you hadn't thought of that, or if you just appreciate the fact that I'm trying to be real about this and I mentioned it, um, you know, I'm not only sharing sunshine and rainbows on RVs. I'm trying to be realistic about this to help you find your second camper the first time. Maybe hit the like button on the video if nothing else, or subscribe if you're new and know that I'll always do my best to shoot you straight because I was never good at shooting uh, things on a curve or an axis. <laughs> um, Axis wasn't the right word, was it? Never mind, you get the idea. Uh, wh what are we looking at over here? So again, the, the, the layout is very, very traditional. Notice that their, uh, their dining table, though, 
This I appreciate. As a long-legged, uh, clumsy guy, it is a no-knee knocker. Although that support, um, you know, if you're uh, a little thicker in the thighs, it might scrape the top of your thighs a little bit if you're the one sitting right over there by the window. And they've gone with that variety of square flow windows that just... It takes the boxy valence lambrequins, all that stuff that always, uh, it, it can be hard to clean sometimes. It doesn't always look good. It, it looks sometimes kind of cheap. They just got rid of all that. And it is a real, um, you know, a real wood frame around those windows as well, which I think is actually kind of cool. They're also using a, a white Ahsoka Tano lightsaber light above the slides and below the island to, to really kind of just cascade and fill in the, uh, actually, let me, let me go flick that indirect light switch for you because... Um, it, it does more than I kind of expected it to. I think it's, oh, good. I guessed correctly. So, you know, looks kind of black, right? And it's not much, but isn't it crazy how that just sort of makes it go, oh, like it just kind of breathes some life into the RV. But similarly, the same switch, you've got one switch to rule them all, does the same thing down here. And it's, it's crazy how just a little bit of uh, indirect lighting really kind of sparks this thing alive, at least in my view right here, you know. Now, a couple other details I noticed before we start opening everything up and checking out all the storage. Um, you'll see that these overhead cabinets, they open sideways instead of trying to flip up and down because they don't have any kind of overhead struts. I think that was a smart decision. And on both sides of that sofa, you do have some household and USB plugs, and I love their location. Because uh, that does mean that if you do have somebody sleeping on this uh, rear fold-out hide-a-bed, this could even be like a CPAP-friendly rear sofa. Or you might actually have room to like set a laptop down over there and charge. And you'll see over on the coffee bar is where I'm doing my little laptop warrior routine myself right now. But one of the things I want to do is park my backside down over here at the theater seat and open that power televator and let you see what this thing is going to look like when you're just staring straight down the barrel of the sucker. So hitting that power button, opening that up right there. I'm curious, by the way, first of all, what do you prefer a power up-down televator or a manual swing left and right television? And if it is a televator, do you prefer it with gas struts or an actual 12 volt power mechanism? I'm, I'm kind of curious to know what you think. Now, um, to the right, of that uh, stove top, like against the refrigerator wall, there are some household outlets over there. So you do have some easy reach outlets, any area where it really matters in this kitchen space, I think. You know, they didn't go nuts with like 12 outlets in the kitchen, but they're not insufficient. And there's a big space for a wastebasket under that sink. They did a good job not wasting all the space in that kitchen island. They did a really good job over there. Now the, uh, the table does have that extension leaf. So if you really do want to have uh, some guests over in your more couples focused model. That's something that you can, uh, you know, make work. Um, the uh, uh, the theater seat, one of the things, you know, yes, it does have that hard fixed armrest, but that does mean that there's some power outlets and there's some USB plugs. So if you really want to be able to like uh, have your, your, your phone charging near you or something like that, or I've actually got things like a, a USB heat pad. Um, you know, like if my, my lower back's bugging me after, at the end of the day, I actually have USB plugs built right into my sofa at my house. And sometimes I'll fire that sucker up and just kind of, you know, relax the muscles and the ache away. Cause it turns out I'm not 37 years old anymore and wrestling open hide beds and stuff like this all day, every day starts to take a toll. Although I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna complain. My job is far, uh, lighter duty and easier in terms of physicality than quite a few out there. And I'm very thankful for our hardworking men and women uh, in this country who make some of the more undesirable things that I get to enjoy every day not a problem for me. Now, backing up here, I'm kind of going about it this way. Because this the, the way this bathroom door works, it almost feels like it's intended to be used coming from the bedroom. Because if you notice how far it swings... If you're coming from downstairs, you you basically, I, I don't think it's a smart idea to go walking backwards down the steps. I think you actually want to come like all the way up and then open the door and then slide your way in. And then when you do, what you're going to see is a very, um, very common layout in this bathroom in terms of the, the modern RV market today. But one that is also, I think overall, done nicely and effectively. Um, beginning with the fact here that they have some very nicely segmented linen storage that is very deep. You see how deep the, the, the shower is. The linen storage goes all the way down there as well. Not to mention the fact some good hip elbow shoulder room around that porcelain foot flush stool right there. And you may have noticed 
Um, anywhere that they possibly can, Harry Glens will not use floor heating vents. You'll notice that they were able to accomplish that here in this model today, and I and I think very effectively overall. They've done a good job in here. The the medicine cabinets basic, but it gets the job done, you know. One of the things I like in here, though, with that barreled ceiling is the headroom that we get in this uh, shower space is actually really, really nice. And you may have noticed it does have a little seat or maybe like a little foot stool off in the corner there of the shower in case you, uh, I don't know, for personal comfort reasons or whatever, need to, to use something like that. Now, moving forward here, Optional second air conditioner, but I, I can't imagine anyone not building it with one of these. It is a 15,000 BTU, just as the uh, living room is, so you're getting a 30,000 BTU total cooling capacity, and it is centralized, so it does help uh, provide cooling effect and function to the entirety of the RV. And this is also their new VersaTilt uh, bed system right here. You're finding this through the entirety of the Salem and Wildwood family of RVs, wherever they can manage to put it. Um, it's a, uh, a power up, down incliner. I will tell you, it's not like a, a sleep number bed. You're not, it's not intended for you to lay on the bed and put it up at the same time. You need to be off the bed and not put extra weight on it when you want it in the up position. But what's kind of nice is it lets you sort of, um, you know, like sit up in bed at night. If you feel like, you know, reading a book or watching TV, uh, you can over here. What do we, what do we got? They put out some decorations We've got, uh, looks like W.M. Akers, West Side Saints. We walked down the hallway, which was as dim and silent as a crypt. He followed close behind. His stride was awkward, as though his legs were tortured by arthritis or some old injury. All right, that sounds ominous. <laughs> that sounds ominous right there. I really like that big window over here in the bedroom. Sorry, I shift gears and I don't do a lot of transitional material as you may have noticed. Um, cracking open all the storage in here. Let's actually begin down here at this little uh, dresser space. Pretty straightforward. The top does flip up for a little bit of hidden contraband storage as you may notice there. And that closet, it is just one giant side to side hollow wide open closet. Tons and tons of hanging room space. Great if you have tall stuff, but it is also prepped and ready if you do want to put a washer dryer in there. So it does also have that capability, which is cool. Then, of course, you have um, that, that versatile bed. It does still lift for storage below, and you see how they include those totes. Keep in mind, though, if you want to lift the foot of the bed to access that hidden little foot locker storage under the bed, you need to have the versatile down. If you try to leave it in the up position... Um, eventually it's going to, something's going to stress too hard. The struts are, something's going to break is what, what's going to happen. So make sure you have that bed in the down position. And I don't know that a lot of people realize that's the case. So I like to share that. And here's another thing where an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Make sure you, on your like, you know, pre-trip checklist, you latch those closet doors shut. You know, they pulled these RVs up here for me kind of as a courtesy, and eventually these RVs are going to ship out to some dealership before eventually finding a home in someone's backyard or driveway or whatever. And um, I, uh, I realized that I almost just left those things, you know, flinging wide open, which by the time it travels down the road could break if those doors start sliding around. So, just little, little things like that to think about really will help, uh, you know, like I said, ounce of prevention, pound of cure, keep you out of the repair shop. So, like a lot of triple slide fifth wheels like this, hallway over here in the campsite, bedroom and bathroom, those are readily accessible. What is nice, though, is although we can't get to the entirety, like we can't get to the freezer, you can walk right in and get to the fridge. So, in terms of travel function, I do think it accomplishes what I call the big three. Does it necessarily a lot like uh, can you use the entirety of the living cabin going down the road no but i don't think that that's necessarily what towable rvs are intended for if that's what you're looking for that's where motorized rvs come into the equation now you might hear that the fridge is chiming right now because i left it open too long so you know stuff doesn't like you, you don't end up with sweaty eggs now we are down at their factory where these are built today. They were kind enough to pull a couple of these up for me, so we might hear some background noise, some forklifts backing up, all that kind of fun thing. And you might notice right here, we're looking at a Heritage Glen and then right next door, a Salem Hemisphere. They are literally the exact same thing with two different names. Call them Harry Sphere Hemiglens or whatever you, you, you feel like. I like the phrase Harry Glen because it, I don't know, it just sounds uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, once again though, looking at the weights and the measures there, 
shockingly lightweight for the size of fifth wheel that we're looking at right here. That's one of the more interesting things is they're not necessarily building to intentionally be the lightest weight guy out there, but they really do come in with some very solid, you know, lightweight uh, kind of tags on them here. Uh, automatic leveling, this does look like, let me crouch down a little bit here. I think this is actually, that looks like a four point system, not a six. Some of the Harry Glens do have a six point system when they get a, a little bit larger. This must be on the, probably due to the fact that it only weighs 10.5. That's something a lot of people don't realize. The need for four to six point leveling changes at certain weight points sometimes. It really can vary in that regard. Now, a couple of cool details, like down here, uh, there is a gas grill quick connect. It's just kind of uh, easy to miss. You see that little white flag hanging down. The underbelly of this also has, let me get you a little bit closer, has a uh, enclosed accessibility to it. So it is enclosed, it is forced air heated. They do run a radiant barrier layering down there and they do have holding tank heaters standard on these, which is kind of nice. You see the, uh, the, the stable step sticking out. You might notice that's a triple, not a quad. Uh, because of the lighter weight nature of this, it can run on a little bit smaller chassis, so it doesn't actually sit quite so pie high in the sky. And again, all the crazy window coverage on these things. And uh, they are all, like I said, windows that open for airflow, but still have the bug screen. So it's kind of a, uh, kind of a cool, mostly best of both worlds sort of thing. About the only window I've seen that does not open for airflow would either be the, the viewing window in that entry door or that big window just to the left of where it says Salem Hemisphere. Those are about the only windows I've seen that don't exactly open for airflow. Now down below here, a couple cool things. We have ourselves the, the outside speakers. Um, I'm, I'm kind of in the camp of like, I'm okay if manufacturers get rid of them, but I respect when a manufacturer brings them down lower like this so they're not blowing away the neighbors. The other thing is they have easy magnet holdbacks and slam latches and all their main pass-through doors across their entire family, even their trailers. And it's not a drop frame compartment, but it's also not small. I left a big cardboard box in there that I, I don't know what that's from, maybe microwave um it says for gile so it must be italian it looks like a major award and if you pick up that reference that i'm putting down your childhood was probably very very awesome and teleporting like david blaine over to the other side on the right hand side you see our docking center up on the left you see your auto leveling controls um they're, they're not in a terrible spot. You don't have to reach in too far to get them for, with my long arms. I can still like look to the left and I can line of sight that pin box, but if they were slid those auto leveling controls a little closer to the outside wall, I I don't know. I wouldn't mind. It, would, it wouldn't bother me at all. Now, they're using a tankless on-demand water heater, and it's a 60,000 BTU variety. They're using that through their whole family. The reason I really stress 60,000 BTU, there are a lot of tankless on-demand water heaters out there in the industry today. And some uh, I've seen as low as like 30,000 BTU, so half of the heating capacity of this one. And with a 30K BTU, you will generally be able to take a nice long hot shower. But if somebody even so much as like touches the hot faucet tap on the kitchen sink, you're about to get stabbed with some cold pins and needles very, very quickly. 60,000 BTU heater will generally mean that you're able to take like hot showers and like run some hot dish water or you know if you're going to be cooking with some hot water at the same time so it's just those little details that sometimes make a uh, a nice impact difference in function there some great oh geez about rolled an ankle on a stone here in the parking lot call osha for that one <laughs> um uh, campsite windows. That's what I was about getting ready to say before I almost rolled my ankle. They give us some really good campsite window coverage and it's easy to miss because the slide out is covering them, but they are running a Goodyear Endurance radial, so they're putting some decent sneakers on this kid before they send him off to school right here. Um, again, even your sofa side windows are opening for airflow. Got a 250-pound uh, rated ladder to get you up to that fully walkable roof, and if you look up top, not only can you see the dual air conditioners, you can just see the optional 200 watt solar package uh, kicking up over the top there. Now, that's a good battery tender. It's not intended to like, this This has none of the solar inversion capability of like running the air conditioner and stuff like that. That's not what this one is. Um, it's a good battery tender. Now, they are using a 30 amp controller that uh, you could daisy chain some solar panels on. Uh, I've been advised you can scale that up to 
uh, say 450 to maybe 500 watts before you're going to need to start doing some aftermarket replacement on things. So thanks again for tuning in. Now, like I mentioned, there are a lot of builders that make a layout like this. So I'm going to leave you links in the description to a bunch of other videos that I've done with similar layouts, as well as being able to check pricing and availability for this model on our website across all of our Bishes RV locations. And short of that, any questions, any comments, any feedback, uh, you know, it's new to them. It's not new to the industry, but where did they do well and how could they improve it a little bit further? Leave us some notes and we'll get that feedback to them. Until then, though, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.